Hey, let's continue looking at the Wimby specials. You are locked on Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's Fight San Antonio. Glad to have you all back. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hope you all having a good work day. As always, we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen every single day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. Pick a platform we're there, such as iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Ken's Five Plus app, so much more. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. What are we talking about today? See it on your screen there, up in that corner. We're going to be continuing looking at those Wimby special betting odds, future odds. Uh, we talked about most of them last week on Locked On Spurs. We're going to continue that, see if our guest can uh, show that he does not have any scared money with the final Wimby specials. And then talk about you guys, Locked On Spurs fans, right here on Locked On Spurs, all those YouTube comments you were talking about. So just a quick primer. For those of you who do not know, FanDuel, a very good partner here at Locked On Spurs and Locked On Podcast Network, have uh, recently released Wimby Specials Betting Odds. So these are these future odds you can uh, bet on. So, for example, last week we touched on if he can record a quadruple double. Those odds are at plus 1,200, score 55 points or more. In a regular season game, 650, you get the idea. And one thing we learned about last week with our panel with uh, – uh, Jack Thompson and Rudy Campos was that none of these should be surprising. Some of these are pretty, you know, close to spot on happening. 55 points in a game for Wimby. Nobody would be surprised. Rick course, a quad dub. Nobody would be surprised, et cetera. But now we're getting to the nitty gritty. These are a little bit more specific, kind of hard to do, whether you're Wimby or LeBron. Or it, they're just difficult uh, accomplishments on the court. We'll see if our guest believes that Wimby can uh, knock these out. and. Maybe, 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 maybe they might make some money for themselves. We'll see if they'll put some money down on these odds. Let's go ahead and bring in our guest. He is Rudy Campos of Sweep the League. Rudy, welcome back, man. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I'm excited to talk more Wimby here. <laughs> I know. Well, well, you know, last week when we did the roundtable, me, you, and Jack, we realized that there were just so many of these Wimby special betting odds that we just couldn't fit it all into uh, kind of a shortish video. So we might as well just continue those and see if – you want to help uh, Spurs fans who are thinking about putting a little bit of a little bit of something on these Wimby special betting odds. By the way, I heard because of last week's show, you actually are now a millionaire because you put all this money down and like Vegas told you already, look, they're going to hit already. So just buy yourself that castle in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, I actually put money down, but it wasn't on the Wimby stuff. Uh, I took New Orleans, so I wore the Cowboys. Oh man. So I heard Cowboys fans are in shambles today, or just since yesterday, or a couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah, it was bad, man. It was bad. But now, as far as Wemby goes, let's just say I, I, I definitely am going to put uh, some money on what we talked about at the first round table. Let's see if we can get something going on this one. Absolutely. All right. Again, he is Rudy Campos of Sweep the League. Follow him on X at Sweep the League. He has a show on YouTube. We're going to be talking about that in just a few minutes. Let's go to dive into these Wimby special betting odds via FanDuel Sportsbook. So um, let's see if Rudy has scared money on this one. We kind of had fun with this one last week, but we didn't really dive into it as much. It was towards the end of the show. But according to FanDuel, the odds are at plus 900 that Wimby will record 12 or more blocks in any regular season game uh, this upcoming season. How are you feeling about that? Plus 900 are those good odds, good odds. Do you think Wimby can do it? You know, if there's a player in the league that you can kind of put money on, it's going to be Wimby when it comes to the blocks. We've seen multiple games where he's had multiple blocks, um, double-digit blocks, actually. So I, I think 12 blocks is more attainable than a number like 15 or 16 blocks. I think the NBA record is 14 blocks in a game, which – yeah, I will say that it will be obtained by Wimby more than likely at some point in his career. I can see that happening. Uh, but the plus, the 12 plus blocks, I would take that bet and I would probably be comfortable taking that bet. Hence why, mm -hmm. you know, plus 500 odds is actually pretty good odds of saying that he's going to do it. Um, but yeah, I, the only thing I can think of is maybe he won't be able to do it because coaches may scheme for him to be away from the basket. Yeah. But you got to remember, he's a very good, you know, he's got long arms on the perimeter. He can challenge a lot of jump shots as well. So I think 12 block plus blocks is obtainable. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Uh, last season, 
his highest block total in the game was 10. And he did that versus Toronto in uh, February. So he is right there. And then you follow that up. His second highest block night was nine against the Nuggets. And there's Joker right there. You know, he mm-hmm. and that was on, uh, you know, again, last season. So we can't forget, too, he led the league in blocks, shots last season. You know, he was just heads above the rest. 3.6 a game. I'm 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 gonna take those odds because he also added some weight to him over the offseason. He said he had about four to six to eight pounds of muscle. I think that's gonna help. The only things I think is gonna hurt him is that now as you mentioned, teams are gonna scheme against him, throw double, triple teams at him. Uh perhaps, you know, even even he's such a threat on the defense, you know, they may box him out, throw two bodies on him on the glass just to get him away from those second chance opportunities for the Spurs. But 12 blocks, 12 blocks or more, according to Vandal. I'm going to take those odds. And it's not going to be surprising if he does it. He, you know, if, if he does get 12 or more, and again, he leads the league in block shots, it, it, I think it's going to be a travesty next season, uh, Rudy, if he does not get the DPOI. Your thoughts? He should have got it his rookie year. There's no doubt yeah. about that. Mm-hmm. Um, there, I don't know what was uh, anybody was thinking on that. But, yeah, it would be a travesty if he doesn't get it. Uh, he should be defensive player of the year next year. He's a favorite going into this year. There's no oh, yeah. no Heavy question. Favorite. Yeah, yeah, no question on that. But you know, as far as the blocks, the biggest thing I have on blocks is you may see some coaches scheming too, where they put their centers, their big men out on the perimeter more to keep them away from the basket. Mm-hmm. But one thing that I mentioned with Derek Irvin, I think the league is what we agreed on is his recovery time is so good, and he has so mm-hmm. his arm length is so long that I mean he's able to recover quick. So even if you take him away from the basket, he can get back with ease, and that's why I think that that block rec not record, but that block bed is actually obtainable. Yeah, and look, he had about let me see, let me see one, two, three, four. He had four games where he recorded seven seven blocks. So it's there. I think it's there. And look, he's going to get more minutes this upcoming season. Recall everyone that he was on a minutes restriction to start kind of like the first half of the bulk of his first half of his NBA rookie season. Mm -hmm. So they're going to unleash him. They're they're definitely going to unleash him. They're going to put him out there. I would not be surprised if he's averaging about 32 or more minutes a game next season. So uh, watch out, uh, NBA. He is coming. If you're trying to get into that paint, he is going to give you problems. And, it's, and you saw it last season. The, sometimes it'll be a fast break and Wimby's the only guy back. And it's like hot potato with the opposition is, you know, you take it, you know, you take it, you take it. You know, so there's that. So, but I think now that the league and especially the opposing teams got a full season to see him and scout him, I think you're going to see a different approach with the Wimby next season, especially on the defensive end and how teams attack him. But 12 or more blocks? Yeah, I'm taking that all day. All right, let's go ahead and go to our next uh, Wimby special betting odds via FanDuel. Again, we, we again we kind of played with this one last week with you, with you and Jack, but we'll dive deeper. Wimby Yama to record eight or more threes in any game next season, plus 380. Those are a little smaller odds there. So Vegas thinks he can do it. Your thoughts? Uh, there, I'm just going to say there's purely absolutely no way he's going to get eight plus threes in a game. I don't see him making yeah. eight threes in a game. At the most, I can see maybe three or four uh, at most. I think this is a bet where Vegas wants you to take it because they're giving you pretty mm-hmm. good odds and thinking, you know, oh, the possibility is there. The possibility is there. You'll be able to make a little bit of money. But this is one of those odds where I think Vegas says, hey, you know what? We're throwing it out there. This is where we're going to make our cash cow. People are going to put money on it because we're giving them great odds on it. Yeah. And it's just not going to happen. Um, you know, it even goes back to the 60-point game uh, odd that we talked about uh, last week with Jack Thompson. And talking to Derek Gervin on Sweep the League, you got to remember that this is pop system. So a lot of these that we may think are attainable are actually truly not because you don't see it in a pop offense so yeah uh, especially for a big guy so yeah especially with the a plus three there, there's no way i want to talk to you about gametime.co you got to go to gametime.co right now to get all those last minute tickets just tickets in general right now game time is a new feature called game time picks it makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier Game Time Picks filter out all the fluffs. You're going to get those incredible deals on great seats. You don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Go through 
right now. Go to game time. You'll get those tickets either for sporting events, theater, concerts. Pick us. Event you want to go to in your area, game time will have you covered. You get views of your seats before you buy. The lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and so much more. Game time picks. Curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, and theater. All-in pricing. It's a new toggle feature that shows the total up front, so no surprise fees at checkout. And the lowest price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code LOCKEDONMBA for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? It's game time. And Muslingers drive through Coffee. Muslingers is a locally owned independent coffee shop, and they're proud to make delicious coffee for our community. They do it fast. They do it friendly. So you get all your day. Whether you're in the mood for a latte, cold brew, Red Bull infused lightning bolt, they got it all. They have drinks for every single taste in San Antonio. They also have a wide selection of dairy alternatives, low calorie options, even caffeine free drinks for those who just want to take it easy. You want to follow them on social media. I'm telling you, go do it right now. Follow them at Muslinger SATX. That's on Threads, X, Facebook, TikTok. The list goes on and on. Very interactive. They have a wide selection of drinks for you to choose from. At Muslingers Drive Through Coffee, friendly staff, mini donuts, the OG OJ, and they have it all. You should be going to Muslingers every single day, San Antonio. Swing by Muslingers Drive Through Coffee for a tasty and convenient caffeine fix. Located at 2404,000 Oaks Drive near Treaty 1 to Open every single day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Once again, 2404,000 Oaks Drive near Treaty 1 to Open every day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Go there right now. Why? Because life is too short for bland coffee. Hey, this is Tom Rod. And I'm RC from the Cybertron Spurs. And you're listening to Locked On Spurs with, with Jeff, Jeff Garcia. Garcia. God, I, I feel like this is a sucker's bet here. I really do. It, is. <laughs> it, it feels like a sucker's bet. But you look, but let's look back last year. So the most threes he made in a game, uh, he did it actually three times. He had five. So he recorded five three-point made shots uh, mm -hmm. three times last season <clears throat> against Denver, against Philly, and against the Thunder. Three more. So we're looking for three more makes. It may. I think it's going to happen. Yeah, so I'm going to take the – oh, my God, I'm, I'm going to have, like, no bank account after after that next season. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to take these odds because the CP3 factor – Think gonna he's gonna set up Wimby, uh, you know, very nicely, easily. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, you got threats now. You know, Harrison Barnes could be a possible threat. CP3 can break down defenses. Who knows what Steph Castle can do as far as breaking down defenses? Devin Vassell's there. <clears throat> I'm not gonna be surprised if he hits eight or more. I'm gonna take this bet because he made five last year, and dare I say, Rudy. He may be the Spurs' best three-point shooter. I mean, you look up and down that roster, there's not that many killers from three, are there? No, he's. Uh, there aren't very many uh, killer three-point shooters on the team. Yeah. And honestly, I think he's probably not the best three-point shooter on the team, but he's probably going to be top three or four on the team. Yeah. Uh, you got to remember, a, a guy like Harrison Barnes can get really, really hot, especially mm -hmm. on the corner. Uh, that's pretty much his bread and butter right there. So he's going to be good at, from the three-point range. Uh, You've also got, you know, Devin, who has improved from three. You've got Chris Paul, who mm -hmm. can shoot the three. So, I mean, he's going to be probably the top three or four uh, shooter on the team. But uh, I don't know if plays are going to be there for him to camp mm -hmm. around the three-point range, knowing that you've got a point guard. So, remember, a lot of these threes, the ball was in his hand and a lot of times. Yeah. So he's not going to have the ball in his hand with Chris Paul that much. So that's why I think the decrease in three-point attempts is going to probably end up happening. Well, last season he attempted nearly six threes a game at 5.5, and he only made 1.8, so about two. We'll give him that little bump there. So for mm -hmm. an average of 33% from the three line. So it's not terrible. You know, it's not horrific. But yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's there. Uh, you know, this, this kind of leaves a question. Do you think heading into season two, he should perhaps not go away from the three shot, but maybe rely more on the inside game on the offensive end? Or do you like what you saw as far as him spreading down a little bit of this, a little bit of three shots, a little bit of inside, a little bit of mid range? What do you think about that? Because you heard last year, a lot of fans were saying, Victor, stop taking threes. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I'm on the, uh, well, I'm on the, fa- I'm on the, the bandwagon of just don't be on, don't camp out on three point range. I know you can shoot the jumper, you can utilize that a lot better, but your bread and butter has to be down mm-hmm. below in the post. Uh, a mm-hmm. guy with his ability and his athleticism can dominate in the post, and then you run the pick and roll uh, with a point guard like Chris Paul. Makes it a lot easier, but definitely camp out in the paint. You, you, there's nobody that can block your shot. I mean, it's very, yeah. very difficult. So I think it's just modern NBA times where everybody wants to have the all-around game, prove they can shoot the three, they can shoot the logo shot and all that stuff. Uh, but winning basketball, you've got to go with your bread and butter, and that's in the post. Well, not many be able to, to block his shot except for Rudy Campos. Is that right? <laughs> I go for the steal, man. When you put the ball on the ground, it's gone. I can't. You know I won't I'm, be able to block a shot. I'm surprised no many, not many, uh, you know, opposition did that a lot. You know, fine, you can't stop him for the block, but let him dribble. You know, just try to pester him a lot. Uh, you I, know, turn the ball over. You know, I, I think that's probably one of your better d- defensive, I guess, attacks you can to take on Wimby. But we're gonna stick with three. So. Again, FanDuel put out these Wimby special betting odds. That's what we're doing mm-hmm. right here, Locked On Spurs. So we're going to keep with the three-point uh, theme here. This was, this was tough. Wimby to record 10 or more made threes in any game next season. 10 or more. The odds are at plus 20 to 100. That's going to be some coin if you hit this one. But I don't know if it's 10 or more. What do you think, Rudy? I don't even have him making eight or more, so there's no way yeah. I'm taking ten or more. Now, if it was attempts, I'd take that all day. But no, not making ten yeah. plus threes. It is possible anybody can get hot. I mean, you've seen uh, a big man uh, recently do. I'm trying to remember his name. I went blank here for uh, Sacramento. Keegan Murray. I mean, he got hot in the game, mm-hmm. so it's possible. But you've got to be on, and I, the chances of him being on. Uh, to hit 10 plus threes, it's yeah. not very likely to happen. So, yeah, I'm I'm staying away from this no matter what. Yeah, yeah. I mean, plus 2,200 odds. I mean, you put $100 down, you're definitely getting yourself a net gain there big time. But 10 or more, that's going to be tough, man. That's tough. He, he, look, he's going to get probably some load management games. He's probably going to get those double, triple teams, uh, quadruple teams, wouldn't be surprised. So that's mm-hmm. going to be tough. But we've seen Victor, he tends to be streaky. You know, if he's on, he's on. If he's off, he's off in the three line. And, you know, sometimes Spurs, as mentioned, Spurs pull their hair out because he's like, Victor, stop taking threes when he's not he's not on. But I, I did think this is the bet that maybe everybody should stay away from. Once again, we're talking with Rudy Campos of Sweep the League, discussing or at least continuing and finishing off the Wimby special betting odds right here on Locked On Spurs. Those betting odds are brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, a very, very awesome partner here at the Locked On Podcast Network. All right, let's continue this and wrap this up before we get into your comments. Now, this is this is a good one. This is an interesting one. I want to hear your thoughts on this one. So FanDuel mm-hmm. puts the odds at plus 1,200 that Wimbayama will record 10 or more assists in any regular season game. You know where I'm going with this one, Rudy? This one might be one of the tougher ones for him to hit because we talked about it many times here at Locked On Spurs. This roster doesn't have knockdown shooters that you can rely on every game, do they? No, they don't, and that's the problem is if he gets a double team, triple team, he's going to look for a guy, and more than likely it's going to be a shooter, but this team doesn't have any knockdown shooters with the exception of Mm -hmm. the additions of Chris Paul and Harrison Barnes. You know, Like I said, Devin Vassell did improve on his jump shot, but – I mean, consistent knockdown jumper or shooters, it's it's not on the team. So, also, the ball's not going to be in his hand very much, I'm assuming. So, again, the assist total probably is going to go down. And, again, that goes back to the quadruple-double part where I think the assists are not going to be there, so it's going to be more difficult for him to hit any of those. Yeah, but first, I want to talk to you about FanDuel. You heard us talk a lot about FanDuel. Why? Because it's in America's number one. And sports book. Well, we all have a little bit of something different today. You know, I think you're gonna like it. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet five bucks and get themselves a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. You heard that right. That is a great deal. You better jump on that right now. 
Then with the YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every single regular season, Sunday afternoon, out-of-market game. You just need a Google account, current form of payment. You can cancel at any time. It gets even better, right? Get that deal right and done right now. And if that's not enough, be sure to check out FanDuel's Profit Boost in the app and use it for FanDuel's Double Your Winnings for all of Sunday 915 pregame money line bets. Profit Boost will be live starting Thursday, September 12th. View your account page now to learn more about your boost. You want to go to FanDuel.com right now. Go to FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. It's a big issue with the Spurs roster right now, and it's 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 deep at point guard, it's, it's deep at small forward forwards, but when it comes to outside shooting, that is the theme of this uh, roster that is weakened, that's very weak right now. Sohan, no. Trey Jones, no. Keldon, so so, I guess, but maybe leans towards no. Devin, perhaps. Harrison Barnes, sure. Wimby, sure, but. You know, you need that kind of space in around Wimby and Spurs don't have that. And if Victor's looking to pass out of double teams, triple teams, or just he's trying to drive and kick, you know, he kicks out to us. A, a Sohan, I think everybody in, in watching games will be like, oh, no, well, here we go. Like, will it go in or not? So this one's going to be tough for him to do uh, 15 or more assists. I mean, I'd be more lot. comfortable. I'd be more comfortable if Doug McDermott was still on the team. I'll just say that. Mm. Or even Osmond <laughs> to somebody, you know, uh, Probably. but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, this is again, this is, a, this is a spot on the uh, Spurs roster that I think needs to be addressed ASAP because you need spacing around Wimby for him to operate. Now his highest assist total last season was against the Pistons on January 10th, 10 assists, 10 mm. assists. After that, he had nine versus the Pelicans, eight versus the Nuggets, and then uh, another eight assist game versus the Lakers. So you're looking for him to for him to rely on his teammates to make shots and jump from ten highest last year to fifteen or more. Whew, that's tough. You're gonna need one of those nights where maybe Malachi Flynn is on. <laughs> Malachi Flynn dropped a fifty night point night last season. You need something like something random like that to happen. But 15 yeah. or more assists in a regular season game, geez, that's tough. At plus 1,200 odds, again, you know, that's what I'm probably going to stay away from. All right, let's go and round it out here. Uh, the final uh, fan duel Wimby special betting odds category. This one's interesting. And this is one I think he can do. Uh, it goes back to my quad dub argument here, what we did last mm-hmm. week. So Wimby to record eight or more steals in any regular season game. You taking that? You putting some money down, the odds are at plus 900. I think out of all the ones we've talked about today, this is one where I would probably put a little bit of money on. Um, even at yeah. that, I mean, eight steals in a game is extremely done. Uh, Alvin Robertson, probably the most recent spur to have done it in his quadruple double. But to get, you know, to get five, six steals in a game, it's ridiculously tough. To get eight mm-hmm. in a game, it's super tough. But – what I credit when beyond is the length, his hand, his arm length. It's, yeah. it's, it can make some things happen. Uh, he can get in passing lanes. He can make it difficult for people to pass into the perimeter. I mean, into the post. So I think out of the ones we've talked about today, that's probably the one that I would lean more towards taking. But again, mm-hmm. the, the difficulty in eight plus assist in at least one game, it's super, super hard. Yeah, it's tough. Now, looking at uh, last se- season, uh, Wimby, the most steals he had in the game versus, was versus the Denver Nuggets on November 26th. He had six steals. And yeah. then he had a he had a five-steal night versus the Lakers, a five-steal night versus the Kings, and then a four-steal night versus the Warriors. You hit it on the head, though. I, I think his length uh, is going to be key if he's going to knock down um, this uh, Wimby special betting odd here. But eight or more steals, this is going to be tough, man. Ah. Uh, Plus nine hundred odds. That's what makes me tempted. Again, Vegas will will destroy you. You destroy your bank mm. account. So this is where I I'm tempted to big time because I think he can do it. 
again, I talked about the added muscle, so I think that'll help. Uh, you know, we know his length. He's already he got a full season in the NBA. He knows how maybe teams operate, how players operate. Very high IQ. Uh, <laughs> you know, really, I'm, I'm going to put some money down. I, I don't have scared <laughs> money right now on this one. I'm going to get. Well, I'm going to say he's going to get eight or more steals. What you're, what you're going to say? No, I was going to say so. A lot of people got to understand, like, in a lot of these prop bets, basically, for Wimby, these special bets that they have, Vegas is going off of, okay, he hit it or came close to hitting it one time last yeah. year. So what they do is they figure in the additional minutes he's going to be getting this year. So they're saying, okay, well, an extra 10 minutes a game, 11 minutes mm-hmm. a game, he's going to have another opportunity to maybe get a couple more. But nonetheless, look at the very first statement I just made. It only happened maybe one time or he came close to it one time last year. Mm-hmm. So they're expecting everybody to be on the Wimby train and hyped up, and they know that maybe out of 10, nine will probably not hit. One will hit because of a fluke. So that's the one thing that people got to keep in mind when they bet is they're trying to ho- coax you into uh, taking these bets because he got close one time last year or did it one time last year. Yeah, I mean, this just goes to another argument, too, that why he better win the defensive player of the year. I mean, it was a travesty. I mean, he should have. Was, I mean, seriously, Rudy, it was – I mean, you, you just look at the numbers with him and Gobert and the rest of the field. It was not even close. But, look, he has the ability to rank high in steals. He has the ability to rank – obviously, he can do it in blocks. He can do it defensively on the, the rebound, defensive rebounding. You know, even changing blocks, he, he's there. And, and his defensive impact is just so obvious that if he can get those blocks and get the steals we're talking about, he's just he's just a threat. He's just a big-time threat. He makes him a unique defender. You know, even if he has his back to the player driving to the basket, he'll recover, as you mentioned, the recovery time, and be able to disrupt plays. So, yeesh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm going to take it. Like I said, I'm going to take these betting odds. I'm going to put a little money on that one. So there you have it. We wrapped up the Wimby special betting odds right here on Lockdown Spurs with Rudy Campos. We need to hear from you. Let Rudy know what you think about his takes on these special betting odds for Victor at Sweep the League. And he's going to be talking about his show, Sweep the League, in just a few minutes. So let me know by simply subscribing to Lockdown Spurs on YouTube and follow me on X at Jeff G Spurs Zone. All right, it's going to wrap up this episode of Lockdown Spurs. And get into some fan comments. Yes, everybody, the offseason is winding down. Just a few more weeks and it's over. So uh, here we go. Uh, Rudy, let's see what the Lockdown Spurs fans are talking about. All right. This first one is uh, from Juan Santos, DT6IU. I don't know where these people get these numbers. Like, how do, how do, you, how do you make up a name like that? So he's reacting to that outrageous, outlandish, uh, trade proposal from a fan website, I think it was called Basketball Forever, where the Lakers and the Spurs and that fictitious trade made a deal that sent Wemby and Sohan to the Lakers and the Spurs received LeBron James, a 2026 Lakers first round pick, Austin Reeves and D'Angelo Russell. So here's his comment. He says, I'm tired of the Lakers being so involved in many trades. They don't, and they, they don't get anything. Leave our alien alone. And I think what he's referring to here, Rudy, is the fact that Whenever it's a big name, marquee, megastar center, the Lakers always land them. Anthony Davis, mm-hmm. Pau Gasol, Shaq, Kareem. What do you think about this? You know, putting aside that land is trade because the Spurs will never do that. Do you think that's a little bit of worry if the Spurs are not winning and he's about to hit free agency or expiration of his uh, current contract? Is that something to be worried about? Uh, it's not something to worry about anytime soon. Uh, you know, unless he just demands a trade like Kawhi Leonard, where he just doesn't want to play and he forces his way out, then yeah, you get worried. But I mean, he's got his rookie contract. They, they own his rights for the next, you Mm -hmm. know, almost like what, six years now, seven years, uh, because they can sign him to, uh, the big, you know, super max free agency. I mean, uh, contract. So unless he forces his way out, and at that point, if he does, the Spurs would be able to make any type of trade. Obviously, people, our teams are going to pay a pretty penny. And you can say, well, you know, he's holding the Spurs uh, hostage and they're going to have to take what they can get. Well, not necessarily because a smart team would say, you know what, if you're forcing the trade out, but we still have you under our, our, our team, our contract, 
we're just going to leave you there. I mean, whether you play or not, and that's what I said what should have happened with Kawhi Leonard. You have him under contract. If you're forcing your way out, we're not going to trade you until we get what we want. And yeah. they actually got a pretty decent deal out of it, obviously. But the same thing with Wemby. I mean, he's not going to force his way out. The Lakers are always involved in something because yeah. – that is what sells. That is what sells the market for NBA. You always involve the Lakers somewhere. You want to get traction towards the page, Jeff. If you're covering the Spurs like you do, and you want to just make some outlandish thing, it's going to be involving <laughs> the Spurs. You're going to throw whatever sticks to the wall so yeah. you can get traffic to your page. That's all it is when it comes to these uh, people that write for Lakers and all. Every, almost every other team too. I mean, a lot of people just post yep. stuff sticks to sticks on the wall. Yeah. Th- first of all, that trade will never happen. And if the yeah, Spurs, no, yeah, if, if the Spurs are still circling the drain or still trying to get out of the rebuild, uh, you know, then that should worry. You know, I think things would help in the direction if they continue to make good moves towards rebuilding, like bringing in veterans Barnes and CP3. It, that that'll work. You know, so as long as the Spurs are on the upward trajectory, I don't think Spurs fans uh, should worry about Victor uh, leaving. And uh, it's not just it, look, look. He's doing well as far as marketing in San Antonio. You know, it hasn't really impacted him. Even uh, Commissioner Silver on the State of NBA address he had a couple of weeks ago said that, hey, you know, market size really doesn't matter. And he, he highlighted the Spurs and Wimby thriving in that department. So the mm-hmm. Lakers are always going to be involved in any type of major big name free agent, especially when it comes to big men. So no surprise there. All right. Thank you for that comment. The next one comes from let's get it let me get a good one here i had it here let me find it lost it ah here it is this is from head log 8311 i think he's a spurs and cowboys fan based on his avatar there he has a spurs logo across the cowboys star there but he is reacting to the uh spotlight episode we had about city sissoko and how he fits on the roster his comment is he a city probably will be out of the league in a year or two hope i'm wrong but i don't but i don't think so what do you think about uh, sissoko's future with this uh team you know is he gonna be leaned on this upcoming season is there a log jam at his position dare i say he might go back to austin what do you think it's so hard for city because i expect him to be on the opening day roster in san antonio and not back in austin uh but again there's kind of a jam at that position the log jam to where he's more than likely going to have to start in austin i'm going to just say right now i i kind of already seen what i got out of malachi Branham, so i would almost put city a little bit ahead of him just to see what we have in city sissoku i mean that yeah. that's the best way to to determine it so i i think if city you know balls out then you may see malachi fall down a little bit but at this time we kind of know what we're getting out of malachi Branham. Let City Sissoko play a little bit more at the beginning of the season. If he can't run, he can't run. You know, make your decision off of that. But nonetheless, if, if he stays with the Spurs, like I said, I, I think it's going to be an Austin type of thing. Um, I, I, he's got to make – to me, he makes the opening day roster, I think. He, he's good enough to do it. But, again, it's just so hard to tell with City. He may be out of the league in a couple of years. I have no idea. But he's good enough to where another team will pick him up if the Spurs don't want him. Absolutely, yeah. And look, he he's got he he's just entering his second year. You know, do you give him a, a continue to give him a pass there? Maybe, but you you got to look at City's future. And I would not be surprised if it's not in San Antonio. And look at look at Lonnie Walker. You know, he's turned in from almost like a, a permanent guy on the Spurs roster to the journeyman now. So, mm-hmm. you know, things happen like this in the NBA, and and City could be one of them. Great kid. You know, but remember, highlight kid, his NBA career is just beginning. So if he goes to Austin, I think that's fine. I think perfect. Let him go to Austin. Let him show out. Let him dominate like he did last season. Yeah. There's going to be low management games. You know, knock on wood, nothing happens, but there probably will be a player that gets injured or, you know, something like that or just needs extended time of rest. Whatever it is, you know, City will get burned. But he's going to have to show out. He's going to have to show out in preseason and training camp early regular season games if he gets burned. But think about the depth chart there at his position. You got Devin ahead of him, Harrison Barnes ahead of him, Sohan ahead of him. To a certain degree, Steph Castle, because Castle can't play the small, the three spot. So Mm -hmm. there's some – Keldon, thank you. So there's some depth there ahead of him. 
But even if he takes his talents elsewhere, uh, they'll be good for him. Even, you know, hopefully he stays a spur. I want him to stay a spur, but players got to move on and find their niche in the NBA. And if it means him going to Brooklyn or the Knicks or Chicago or to Jazz, whatever it is, you know, good luck to him. But, hey, we thank you all for leaving those comments at the Locked On Spurs YouTube page. Keep them coming. We need it. We got to get out of this uh, off-season mode, and we're coming out of it very, very fast. Rudy, we were talking about it. We need to know about Sweep. Why should everybody be tuning in? Yeah, so uh, the guys that sweep the league, we're talking to NFL and NCAA football right now. We're getting ready for basketball season. Uh, one of the biggest things that we highlight is uh, we obviously one of the hosts is Derek Gerber, former NBA player. And we always bring up opening the vault. So we're talking about players from the 80s, the 90s, guys that probably never, ever get brought up. Very, very popular uh, subject that we bring up because not only is it NBA, it's also NFL, uh, MLB. It's just a lot of other sports. So we kind of go down memory lane a whole lot as well. That's the reason why you got to join Super League. Just one of them right there, Monday through Friday. Uh, show goes from 9 to about 10, 1030 at night. We're live Monday. I mean, we're live Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. The other nights, you're going to rebroadcast of the show that we go on during the day. So just be a subscriber of YouTube. Go to YouTube. Search at Sweet Billy TV, hit that notification button so you know when we go live. There you go. Yeah, it's a great show. I enjoy coming on every once in a while. It's funny, it's hilarious. You know, there's always these these rumblings that uh, Rudy destroys Geo every nightly on the sports takes, which is confirmed, right? That's confirmed. Uh yeah, I gave Geo a win this for last past week. So uh but yeah, I normally I, I, I gotta take control of that show, man. Look, I know you're not a Cowboys fan, but man, Cowboys fans were in shambles this past weekend, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's funny because Gio and I actually took the Saints to win, but we didn't expect them to win that big. But yeah, Cowboys fans are in shambles, and I don't know, man. I I can just say that unless you make the change in the the top part of the uh, coaching staff, there's really not much that's ever going to change it off for the Dallas Cowboys. You see, you get all this and more at Sweep the League. So go to YouTube right now. Just search Sweep the League and subscribe to Rudy's show. Hey, we thank y'all for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen every single day. Free and available where we get podcasts. We'll be back tomorrow talking all things silver and black as the Spurs offseason continues. Make sure to follow me on X at Jeff G Spurs Zone and follow Rudy on X at Sweep the League. You can do that right now. You don't want to get uh, really upset. Uh, check out uh, Locked on NBA uh, for all things NBA. It's a great show. I pop on there every once in a while. Again, go to YouTube, search Locked on NBA, subscribe to that right now. So for Rudy Campos, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked on Spurs.